Hi, I'm Joey Lott, and in this video, I'd like to respond to an email that I received. Um, I'll just read a part of it. It will be the easiest way to explain uh, what the, uh, the, the person has requested that I respond to. So uh, it says, it's been more than 20 years since I first heard about enlightenment, and since then I realized that there is a strong connection to this with the body. Uh, it goes on to say some more things, and then it says, The experience I have is that it seems that the more I become rooted in the body, the more I become connected in the direct experience of things as they are, or in the simplicity of being, and the attention becomes lighter, natural, and seems that the repressed emotions or traumas from which we used to escape mentally, conceptually, and through distractions uh, are gradually being released from the body and the nervous system, which becomes increasingly calm and balanced or natural. Could you please make a video on this subject and go deeply into this? Could you speak about the simplicity of being by the physical angle? So, um, I don't know if I can go deeply into it, I'm, uh, uh, but I'll, I'll make some comments about this. I think that this is um, true. Uh, at least this is my experience. I find that you know my the, the thesis of what I'm sharing at the moment, and of course these things change and evolve over time. But uh, that really, the heart of what I see as suffering uh, is a resistance to our own experience. And we talk about enlightenment and all these things and that's all very interesting but but I'm not interested I don't care really about enlightenment all I'm concerned about is uh, taking a look at suffering you know it's because the enlightenment is just another carrot that's dangled before us which is it holds out the promise of of uh, f freedom from suffering so I'd rather just go directly and take a look at, instead of the promise of freedom from suffering, I just want to know what is suffering. If we can look at that, honestly, then I feel like that's much more useful. So when I look at that in all of its many forms, and obviously I do videos uh, on many different uh, topics, but at the heart of all of them is suffering. And the uh, the, the basic thing that I see is, like I said, it's a resistance to our own experience. And that resistance is physical. It manifests physically. It's felt physically. Uh, so any denial of that I just see is not useful personally. Now maybe others find use in all of that other stuff. But where I've found the most benefit is just to take a look directly at how it is that this resistance is manifesting physically and then discover if there's a way for me to let go of that resistance and it's tricky because I don't want to make resistance a bad thing resistance happens it's not a problem it doesn't need to be gotten rid of all of the experiences are allowed and welcomed but what I've found is that when we resist life or our experience habitually, then this becomes the only thing that we know to do. And it is a, uh, it, it, it's just, our life becomes very limited because anything that happens, there's an automatic resistance to it. And it's unconscious. And so we're just in resistance all the time, more or less. Uh, except for maybe when we're sleeping, you know, there's just this this resistance that says no to everything that perceives everything as a threat. So basic biology is when there is a threat, our body or a perception of threat, our body responds by tensing up. This is a strategy that our bodies use. It's very useful in the right circumstances. The problem is when we don't take a look, and then we just live our lives in this chronic state of tension, ready, always just prepared to do, to fight or flee from the threat. So 
so in terms of taking a look at how this manifests physically, I, my own experiences, I just find that this resistance is tension or contraction or armoring. And it can be at a very uh, gross level. You know, I've written about how I used to suck in my abdomen. You know, it was very tense and I literally, it was sucked in. And I wasn't even aware of it, but this, this was part of that contraction, that uh, defense against life, resistance to my own experience. So it can be that of that sort. It can be very uh, dramatic in that way. Because when I first started to let that go, it was amazing. My belly uh, stuck out another six inches. I mean, it was a huge change physically. Um, but... Other times it's much more subtle than that, and so I, you know, I found that uh, there can be a kind of resistance that's just as subtle tension or contraction that feels as though it's inside the head. So there are and everything in between, you know. There's so there can be very dramatic tension and very subtle tension, but all of this I find is the same of the same nature, which is a resistance. And it's a self-protective mechanism in which life or experience is perceived as a threat. So I just explore that and I just take a look at how, I'm, how is this resistance happening? How am I doing it? Even though I haven't been aware of that up to now, how have I been doing it? Can I let that go? Not to make it bad, not to make that my new enemy, but just... Uh, as I, I spoke about just in another video recently, it's it's like uh, you imagine for a moment that you're in infinite space and there's a speck of dust and you're just focused on that speck of dust and you spend your whole life focused on this speck of dust. There's a tension involved in that. There's a tension to focus on that speck of dust. Now, that, that's not wrong to be able to focus on that speck of dust. It's fine. It's wonderful. So it's a great skill to have, but there, but but that becomes suffering if that's the only thing that we know how to do, and if we feel terrified to do anything else. And this is what happens: is we uh, we become terrified that if I'm not doing this focus, this tension, then I'm going to be killed. I mean, that's the that is that that really primal fear is that if I don't do this compulsive contraction, then I'm going to die. So we just keep focusing on this speck of dust, even though it becomes unpleasant and painful. But it's possible to discover how do you do that? How do you do that tension to focus on that speck of dust? And you can then just open that focus, soften it, relax. And then there's equal awareness of all of it. Now, is this equal awareness of everything better inherently than that focus on the speck of dust? Not at all. But the point is, if we live our lives chronically tense in this way, and we feel compelled to do that, that's not really freedom, right? I mean, that's not... That's not felt as freedom. That's not experienced as freedom because it feels as though I must do this. So to be able to open the focus or relax that cont contraction in the body, it's a physical experience. To be able to do that, not to make that better, but just to have that flexibility, to be able to allow for that and to then discover and, and truly embody the knowing that that is also okay. That's all that's, in my view, that's that's all that's needed. That's the freedom. We can call it enlightenment. We can call it liberation. We can call it awakening. It doesn't matter. I prefer not to call it any of those things because that just becomes a, a new concept that we um, use, ironically, as more of this armoring. But this is just about the, the, the embodiment of that knowing that this is also okay. 
So there's, it's allowed to have the focus, to have the tension, to have the contraction. It's allowed to have that um, self-protective mechanism. It's okay. It can happen any time, and that's okay. It doesn't need to be gotten rid of. But it's also about the, the felt knowing that it's also okay for there to be open, welcoming, allowing experience that allows for all of it. So there could be contraction or focus, and there can also be relaxation and openness, and all of it is allowed. That's, to me, what real freedom is. And it is, in my view, it's absolutely, a, a, it is a physical, embodied thing. Um, I, I don't know what else to say about that. I hope that's been a, a deep enough exploration uh, but it, it, to the person who who uh, who asked this, if you feel that I have not satisfactorily um, explored this subject and you'd like me to address it more, please just send me an email. And to anybody else who's watching this, if you have a topic that you'd like me to discuss in a video or a question that you have, uh, please feel free to send me an email. And that is the best way to contact me. My email address is Joey Lott at gmail.com. That's J-O-E-Y-L-O-T-T -T at gmail.com. And if you're watching this on Facebook, please like my page and share this page with others who you know who might enjoy these videos and the content on this page. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. In any case, if you haven't already, please go to my website, J-O-E-Y-L-O-T-T dot com and sign up for the free offer that I have available as you are watching this. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time I do a video. Bye for now.